what went wrong in the bowl game loss to Wisconsin? And what went right? You are Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovall. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by and making this your first listen here on Locked On Oklahoma State. You can find me at Twitter at Aldeo State uh, as we're approaching that, that thousand subscriber mark. Uh, I greatly appreciate the push. Let's keep it going. Uh, we're available on all podcasting platforms as well as on YouTube. So, yeah, um, we lost the game. And, yeah, offensively, it was a disaster. And, yeah, we gave up 258 yards rushing, which is, by all definitions, a disaster. But, again, what is our objective? Our objective is to change the false narratives. I have to eat a little bit of crow. Uh, I went ham on Garrett Rangel, and he really didn't look like uh, he knew what he was doing until the fourth quarter. Hats off to Derek Mason for uh, giving us yet another opportunity to come back and win the game. Has it been pretty this season? No, this has been the worst year since 2005. There's absolutely no way anybody can convince me of otherwise because how many times this season do we have to go back and say, well, that was the worst loss since 2007. That was the worst loss since 05. That's the first time we've lost in North Kansas since 1994. How many times this season did we have to revert back to Oh, this was happening before Gundy really got things going. And the odd fact is, like, in, in the press game or post-game interview, instead of being mad at himself or Casey Dunn or Coach Dickey or Coach McIndoo, instead of being disappointed and mad at the people who had dang near three weeks to prepare for this game, he gets mad at reporters who dare ask, you know, what's going on when you lose five of your last six games. And this is when, when we talk about the media takeover, this is kind of what I'm talking about. Nobody asks Gundy hard questions because of things like this. He gets angry, he gets butthurt, he gets mad, and he doesn't want to answer. And then he holds it against that reporter. We've seen it time and time again. So what do people do? They don't ask Gundy questions because they don't want to be banned from, from the room. Maybe not even banned, but they don't want to be shunned. And it's just, it's something that's been happening for years and years and years, right? We've talked about it before. And so while I eat this crow on Garrett Rengel, uh, what do you get, 14 of 31 for 290-something yards, two TDs, two picks. So off of stat line alone, it's not great by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not horrendous. But we all know the stats do not exactly tell the story of this game. We all watched it. Garrett Rengel struggled mightily for two and a half, three quarters. Uh, Stephon Johnson Jr., thank you, sir. Um, if you guys haven't seen the episode with his dad on the show, I, I implore you to go to check it out. We've also got some seven on seven news uh, that'll be dropping here before too long. We've got some things in the woodworks, right? So I'm going to focus on the pot of positives before we hammer on the negatives, which we will. We're going to hammer away, but I, I, we got to give shout outs to the players who showed up. We talked before the game about how somebody like a Trey Rucker was finally going to be able to get his opportunity. He did exactly that. He looked very, very good. Matter of fact, I would argue that Trey Rucker and Lyric Rawls kind of overshadowed somebody like uh, Kendall Daniels in this game. Kendall Daniels had a decent game, right? I'm not going to sit here and say otherwise. But Trey Rucker and Lyric Rawls showed up, and they showed out. So we got to get Trey on the show. We've already had Lyric on the show. Got to check that one out. That's a really, really good episode. You can – feel the desire in this locker room. You can feel the tight-knit camaraderie that they have. This is a very tight-knit group that cares about each other. Clearly, that doesn't always equal enough. But the ineptitude we had offensively was, it's, it's mind-blowing. I understand that Garrett Rangel didn't light the world on fire. But we had three weeks to prepare, and that's, that's the game plan we came up with? Defensively, yeah, we gave up, you know, way over 250 yards rushing is a nightmare. But Derek Mason, yet again, gave us an opportunity 
to come back and win, just like Texas, just like Bedlam, just like Iowa State, just like West Virginia, and then now this game as well. So has it always been pretty? No, but he knows he has a lot of talent to work with, and the transfers that we have coming in are going to be able to help fill some some needs. So I just, again, wanted to give a big shout-out to uh, our main man, Lurk Rawls. Played a hell of a game, had a sack, forced fumble, was all over the field. Lamont Bishop, we, we got to see some of that, that lateral side-to-side -side thing that, that he maybe was lacking a little bit. But I really hope that he comes back for another season because he did show some good things, as did Xavier Benson. His blitz packaging, we've got to work on it. And when I say we, like, I, I'm, I'm obviously not a coach, but <laughs> the dude just, he blitzes very, very, very slow still, right? So he almost gets there a lot. He doesn't take the greatest angles. So we just need to stop blitzing him, it appears. He's pretty daggone good in coverage. He's good in flats. He's good in quarters. He understands his assignments. Uh, he, he can blossom a little bit in, in zone coverage as well. But clearly blitzing is something that we have to work on with him. It's like either do it at 190 or don't do it, right? Drop back in coverage or go get the dude. But again, the hustle, the tenacity, the give a hoot, that was very, very good to see. Our defense is going to be fine. That is the highlight of this season. And it's crazy to say that, right, because of some of the yards that we've given up. But, again, you look at the film. So if you don't even look at the film, if you just go look at the highlights from the Wisconsin game, you will see that our lines controlled, our D-line controlled a lot of the, the, the very initial movement. Wisconsin's just really good at finding and hitting holes, right? We drove their alignment back quite a bit. We just, we, did, we didn't drive them back in order to make a tackle. So clearly there's things that we need to work on. But defensively, I, th I think that's the highlight coming into this, this, this next season. This unfortunately was supposed to be a springboard game and coming into the season, it did not happen. Offensively, goodness me. It just, I don't get it. But I do get that sometimes making extra money is kind of fun. So if your money's acting a little funny, if your change is a little strange, go to betonline.net. It's your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional amateur league out there from pro football, college bowl season, basketball, World Cup. We've got you all covered at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, Got you covered there as well. We're always the fastest and the easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online. It is where the game starts. So, yes, the, the defense, you know, they, they had moments. They had enough moments for us to win that ball game. Now we get to, we get to move on to the offense. I understand, again, that Garrett Rengel did not have the greatest day in the world. But you're telling me that our head man gets almost $700,000 a game per game. And that's the offense we rolled out. If, if you want to even kind of go to the bowl game last season, Spencer Sanders showed out in the second second half but how many times this season did you not see an offense whatsoever until we were down by a mile can someone uh, someone explain that one to me we had two and a half weeks three weeks darn near to prepare for this game against wisconsin and they did exactly what ku and k-state did against us right they, they did a very good job of shifting the, the line one way and then bringing backside routes, drag routes and stuff. And, and it worked. KU got us on it. K state got us on it. Wisconsin got us on it. Oh, you got us on it. So is there some things for Derek Mason to work on? Absolutely. But Derek Mason is far and away in a better position than anybody on the offense. Anybody. There is not a coach on that offense that deserves a raise, a promotion, anything. Okay. Is Gundy going to mix up the, the shop a whole lot? Who knows? Are the are Marcus Arroyo rumors dying down a little bit, unfortunately? But let's let's kind of take into consideration what this game showed us. This game showed us what we've been talking about. This was more validation. 
yes, uh, it's validation of, of me eating the crow as well, that maybe I'm a little bit high on Garrett Rangel. Maybe we do need to transfer a quarterback to help bridge the gap. I don't necessarily 100% believe that. How many offense coordinators produce offenses with quarterbacks that are that are far less capable than Garrett Rangel? You see it all the time. Casey Dunn either cannot call an offense whatsoever, or Mike Gundy is on the headset so much controlling what the game plan is. This playing not to lose mentality, it, it, it that's all this season was. All this season's difficulty was playing not to lose. And injuries. I get the injuries played a, 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 a crucial factor. Was it the end-all, be-all? Absolutely not. Because when you do see guys uh, like Trey Rucker finally get going, when you see Ken, Kendall Daniels become an All-American, when you see Lyric Rawls cover the field very, very well, Cam Smith got burnt a couple times, but – on man coverage type of situations, he did very well as well. But Corey Black, he gets away with some ticky-tacky stuff, so that's something he's got to work on. Uh, but we have little Darius Webb Jr. coming in, in that's going to help solidify that position. Uh, as far as defensive line goes, we got a lot of push. We got a lot of push. Their line is just good at giving little creases, and the running backs are very good at getting through them. So you got to give hats off to their running game. It's as good as advertised, no doubt. And you got to give a shout out to their senior quarterback. Um, you know, he didn't necessarily play amazing, but he did enough. He did enough to, to essentially win the game. This also leads me to my next point, and I have to bring this up. I absolutely have to bring this up. This is a must because this gets swept under the rug all the time. Anytime I have a de debate with somebody in regards to Gundy, I get called blind and, and dumb and ignorant and all this other crap, which is fine. Whatever. I get it. It comes with the territory. But my biggest complaint about Gundy has been, say it with me, conservative play calling. Fourth quarter. How often did we get in the red zone? Not very. So we're in the red zone, and it's, it's an opportunity to, to score. I understand we like points, but why are we kicking a field goal with five minutes left? See, and, and that's the, the stuff I talk about with Gundy, and it always gets forgotten, which is precisely why I have to bring this up at this very moment, right here, right now. What do you have to lose by trying for a touchdown? Why is it so against your, your, your moral fibers uh, to – to kick field goals and punt religiously. The play calling, it, it's ridiculous. It looks like um, my, my junior high coaches came up with this game plan. It's insane. It is absolutely insane that we have this amount of time to prepare, and then we look like we didn't practice not a one daggle single day. We didn't have a single practice for three weeks is what it looked like. It looked like we rolled out of the last game, right? Took three weeks off and then just hit the field with the same exact game plan as we had for the last five losses. Same exact game plan. So, again, the stubbornness, it's an issue. The kicking field goals at ridiculous junctures in the game, it's an issue. It's always been an issue. And unfortunately, it seems as though it, it will continue to be an issue. There's nothing else, right, but you kicking this field goal five minutes left. There's not another game on, on the season, so it doesn't hurt your ratings. It's not going to ruin your chances of playing uh, another game. What do we win? By kicking field goals down by 10 with five minutes left. and. Yes, Derek Mason did do plenty in the second half to give us opportunities to win the game. But it just it does not make sense, guys. This ineptitude is absolutely inconceivable. I don't I don't I don't understand how we come up with this game plan. Nothing was different. Not a single thing was different from this game plan as opposed to the other five losses. So there has to be a shakeup. Has to be. Hell, at this point in time, 
I'm almost okay with Gundy being the OC because then maybe we'll be able to, 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 to visually put into context what the problem is. Because if Gundy's the OC, then people can't say it's all done. It's all done. It's all done. A lot, some of this is undone. Dunn has to have the testicular fortitude to tell Gundy, no, we're, we're going to, we're going to run this play. No, we're not going to punt here. No, we're not kicking this field goal. But it doesn't happen. So we have the same game plan, same game, same play calling. Other than youth getting better, which is what this bowl prep is all about. It's about youth getting more playing time than, than they've got all, all year for the most part. So other than that, what good did we do ourselves by playing super conservative? Especially when Wisconsin is holding the ball for 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 minutes. It just doesn't make sense. I'm okay with Garrett Rangel throwing that last pick. It was a pretty good ball. Um, he threw it close to the right spot for a go route. But just like the announcer said, uh, the DB cut off. John Paul Richardson and JPR wasn't able to get around, and the DB ended up running the route for him. That's good defensive back play. But I don't mind the play call, finally. But why do we wait till the fourth quarter of every single game when we're down by 15, 14, 10, 20, before we see the offense that we thought we could maybe see the whole game? This was the worst year since 2005. And if somebody can jump in the comments and, and, and show me a worse year, I'm all for it. The talent is ridiculous. You see the spurts of talent all the time, right? We've gone over some of them already. But the play calling, it's just so elementary. And the conservativeness that, that, that we exude it's maddening. You can't be high stakes, 100%, go all out in the fourth quarter, but then also not do that at the same exact time. What message does that send? Like, I'm okay. I, I, I think a large portion of us would be as well. If we go for it there with five minutes left and we don't score a touchdown, I think I, I know I am happy that Gundy at least did that. At least he went out of the box and he went for it. So, what's acceptable for next season? Guess who led us in tackles? Jason Taylor II. Please come back, sir. <laughs> now, I do think defensively we're going to be okay regardless. We've got, we've got some stuff to work on. We've got a lot of stuff to work on. But for those of us out there that are trying to say that Derek Mason is a problem, that's just ridiculous. We have lots of problems. And I don't think defense coordinator is one of them. It's one of the few spots of the season where you could say, okay, wasn't great, but at least you saw progress. At least you saw the ability to adapt and change and overcome some things and give your offense an opportunity. Again, in the worst year since, since – 2005, it's not a lot to write home about. I get that. But we're not over here saying that Derek Mason needs a, a trophy for best defensive coordinator by any stretch. But this offensive game plan, you know, I've been very defensive for the most part of Dunn because I firmly, well, let's just say that Let's just say that uh, Gundy's propensity to jump on the headset and override is not, not exactly a secret, right? I mean, that's not, not breaking, earth-shattering news. It is what it is. It's always been a problem. So where do we go, and what does next season look like, right? I mean, I think this excitement should definitely still be there. The talent on this team is not a seven-win squad. 
but we've got to change some things. We have to make some moves. Gundy needs to do something here. It doesn't necessarily have to be like, you know, you know, huge. But it's got to be big enough to shake some things up. We have way too much talent to be winning seven flipping football games. Yeah, this 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 one hurt. This one hurt just because it, it looked like the rest. How do we not have any? I'm I'm saying any growth. How does Tim Rattay have a job when he hasn't developed a single quarterback whatsoever? Spencer Sanders, he was much of the same most of his career. I mean, he improved a little bit, obviously, but it wasn't it, it wasn't big. But Garrett Rangel, everyone talked about how the bull, bull prep, his intelligence shined through, his ability to navigate the playbook was was, was amazing. Well, maybe it, he learned the playbook so easily because the playbook is, is trash. And I know it's gotten these hardcore about not changing anything. We're going to run the same plays, do the same things, yada, yada, yada. I get it. But if it's broke, you got to fix it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay? But if we got a lot of things broke, you can't keep running around saying, yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just CEO. And... You know, with this amount of injuries, there's nothing we can do. And if we can't protect the quarterback, there's nothing we can do. Yet you're the one who kept Dickey. Gundy needs to stop doing press conferences because every one of them, it's just, it's a, a fluff fest. And then anytime he does get asked real questions, he don't answer it. He does not answer legitimate questions. Anything pertaining to his football team. Anything pertaining to Mike Gundy's football team is stuff that Mike Gundy doesn't want to talk about. Our lack of growth is because of these things. We got to see some development from the head man. We have to see a new offense coordinator. I don't care how you shake it up. You got to do something. You cannot keep. Dicky, it's it's preposterous that he even was allowed to coach in this game. Coach McIndoo, yeah, we've already covered that. Coach Rattay hasn't developed Spencer, didn't develop Shane Illingworth, hasn't developed Garrett Rangel, shouldn't have a job. Period. And Gundy's nonchalant attitude about it. It's 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 maddening. <clears throat> so our job here is to to, to set the narrative right. It was a bad, bad, bad season. It was a bad loss. Our inability to come up with a game plan in two and a half, three weeks is inexcusable. But it is what it is. Are we finally coming around to realizing that this offensive staff has to be shaken up? It has to go. And it has to, Gundy has to someday, sometime, like take some accountability on his decision making. You know, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse because I, I do see a lot of bright things for next season. We have a, a crap ton of talent. The transfers that are coming in are going to fill the needs that you could see last night. We need filled. Could we use another quarterback to help? Absolutely. Is it a necessity? I don't necessarily think so. If you have better game planning and you can run the football halfway effectively then, you know, you see quarterbacks that can manage things on a daily basis. You see it all the time. Trent Dilfer is, is somebody that, that that's famous for it. Tommy Maddox uh, the, for the Steelers did some things. Matt Castle was obviously somebody that could manage things fairly successfully. Uh, Alex Smith was somebody who could do the same thing. These are guys that weren't, weren't good and necessarily set the world on fire, but they could manage. They could win you ball games. I would say uh, Mason Rudolph is one of those. If the Steelers would just cut the dude loose and let him go have a life, He's somebody that could be a serviceable quarterback in the NFL. Is he ever going to light the world on fire? Probably not. Is he good enough to win 8, 9, 10, 11 games in the NFL? Absolutely. And it's the same with Garrett Rangel. Right now, he's good enough to win us 9, 10 games. We have the talent around him to do so. This is a coaching problem, 100%. Tried and true, there is no other justification. This is a coaching issue, a coaching issue, a coaching problem. 
and we must solve it. And it starts with Gundy. And if this happens again next year, we have to be willing to stand up as a fan base and say enough is enough. Because this all starts somewhere, right? Crap rolls downhill, correct? So with this uh, inability to put a game plan together, it's not all on Garrett Rangel. It's definitely not all on um, Derek Mason. This is all on my gun and the offensive staff. Every single one of those dudes should have had to walk home, including my Gundy from Arizona. I hell, maybe give him a bicycle. That'd be a good workout. That'd be that'd be a, a Mike Leach approved uh, travel plan, guaranteed. So, here's what it is. Uh, I haven't done the film review. Obviously, I did watch the highlights a couple times this morning. Took some notes. Uh, which is when I saw the defensive line actually did quite a bit of, of controlling their O line. You know, they just they're they're good at finding finding seams and finding gaps. That running back, Braylon Allen, is certified. And their backup, what Ches uh, Moosey? I probably said that wrong, but they're a one-two combo. Luke Fickle's got a lot to work with. I hate that he left Cincinnati. I hate that he went to Wisconsin. I can't stand that we just lost to a Big Ten team. But worst of all, the way that we lost, we literally look like we didn't practice not one single day in the last three weeks on offense. We didn't try to improve anything whatsoever on offense. And again, the defensive numbers are not good. They're, they're inexcusable. But Derek Mason put us in a position to win multiple times throughout the course of that second half, multiple times. And we just offensively, not only did we not get it done, but everybody's like, oh, oh, well, so Gundy. He's like, oh, oh, shucks, that sucks. Oh, hey, let's just, uh, let's kick the field goal here, yeah? Who who cares about winning? Let's just, we're going to make it respectable. That's what it looked like. And the problem is you see that over and over and over and over again with Gundy. And then people want to dismiss it all the time. People want to talk about how many wins he has. People don't want to talk about how many fourth quarter field goals and punts have cost us games. It's just, it's maddening. It's absolutely maddening that this is the game plan that we put together. And that Gundy was not only okay with it, but defensive afterwards. Like, what are you, what are you getting defensive about, bro? This is on you. You're the head guy. You're the one who gives the lackadaisical bull honky answers half the time. You're the dude that decided um, you're going to keep Dickie and McIndoo. It's, it's just... Yeah, we 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 got to shake some things up. We have way too much talent. Guys, here's the thing. I hate to speak negativity into existence, but this talent that we have, that we've been able to retain somehow, we've got, what, 80%, 85% of the production coming back. We're not transferring. But... Why would they come back? Why would they come back in 2024 if it looks the same? Like, I hate to speak negativity into existence, but I have a son who's going through the recruiting process right now. And just like we mean him talk about a hundred times, it's not about the, the, the brand, right? Yeah, we'd love, you'd love to go to Oklahoma State. But if the coaching staff doesn't fit what you're doing, and it's not going to work, then it's not going to work. We're going to have to find a coaching staff that can develop you the right way and put you in the best position moving forward. Doesn't matter who it is. And it's crazy because for a long time, as a kid, I was like, my son's going to O-State. If he's, if he's good enough to go, that's where he's going. No questions asked. Hands down. And I still kind of feel that way. But realistically, if we sat down and Oklahoma State has this, this plan, right, and then we go sit down with, I don't care, Valdosta State, and they have a completely different plan, but Valdosta State's plan is going to include, you know, uh, more playing time or more, more biometrics uh, or more work on his slider as opposed to a curveball or something to that effect. If Oklahoma State's like, hey, we're going to get you to where you can throw 100. And then Valdosta State's like, no, we're going to continue with the spin rate. Okay, then we're probably going to Valdosta State. It's just how it is. If your kid is going to be built for a different style of production, then it, it, it just it, it's what's best for your kid. We've been able to retain a lot of dudes. A lot of dudes are coming back for next season. 
the transfer market for us was the best we've ever had by 10,000 miles. But if the offense looks the same, then we will lose 80% of our roster. And you can't blame anybody. Just like you cannot blame Spencer Sanders for leaving. He's leaving because he gave all he could and he felt like the offense had reached a ceiling with Spencer Sanders. And he's 100% right. I don't know if it's done. I don't know if it's Gundy. I don't care. It's both of them. They both need to fix some things immediately. Immediately. Like, just to save a little bit of the sour grape feeling from this game, Gundy should make a big announcement like tomorrow status. That would that would bridge the gap, right? Coming into summer and spring. Got to do something. Not all on Garrett Rangel. Didn't look great. Not all on Derek Mason. Didn't look great. But we, we had times to win the game. We had positions where we could have won the game multiple times. And, you know, we've had, what, six, seven, eight games this year where our offense didn't do anything until the fourth quarter. So instead of scripting your first 15 plays, maybe we should just film review the, the fourth quarters of every game and then do our offensive game plan that way. Hats off to the dudes who showed up and showed out like Lyric Rawls. And obviously Trey Rucker, Stephon Johnson Jr., uh, Brennan Presley. JPR did some pretty cool things. Rashad Owens, it was nice to see him get involved a little bit. Nathan Latou with the sack. The defensive line did, did some moving around. Um, Brock Martin did some good things. It was good to kind of see him play well in his last game as a Cowboy. Uh, the, the, the middle guys, Sione Asi and Sam Tui Alamaka, again, got a lot of push, didn't get a lot of tackles. So it's eye discipline possibly uh, or, or, or hands placement, getting the hands off of the old, the old lineman. It's just little things to work on. But let's stop saying that Derek Mason is, is terrible and the defense is a problem. It's ridiculous. Uh, we can probably stop saying that Garrett Rangel can't cut it. It doesn't look like, you know, again, the greatest. It looks like we do need somebody to come and help him. I'll swallow that crow. I get it. But if we had a more uh, creative offense, I think the quarterback situation would kind of sort itself out. So let's all hope and pray that that's what happens. We need some shakeups offensively. Absolutely need to have some shakeups happen ASAP. And that's that. I am doing a live show this evening um, because I did make a bet with, um, a, a, I can't even remember who now, if I'm being honest with you. But I bet somebody on one of my live shows um, after the West Virginia game that I'd shave my head. And, um, yeah, not excited about it. It is what it is. But, uh, yeah, the locks of... The locks of love will be gone this evening. So if anybody wants to watch a, 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 a half halfway cry, maybe a slight tear, uh, tune in this evening to the live show. I'll be taking any questions. We can hammer home anything that you guys want. I'll shave the, the head, look like a doofus, and we'll call it a day. So until this evening, as always, I love you all. God bless. Go Pokes. Thank you for making this your first listen here on Locked On Oklahoma State.